It's 535. Why don't we get started? I'd like to call the meeting to order. Thursday, September 10th. There she is. Yeah. Uh, checking <laughs> in. Hi, Janice. Hi, uh, sorry I'm late. Thursday, September 10th. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Why don't we um do we go around the room even though we're already we're already seeing each other? Um we can. Um uh, I'm JD Miller, the chairman chairman of the board. Why don't we go we could go diagonally and really try to get confusing, but Which diagonal? left or right. <laughs> Somebody start. Uh, I'll say Janice Desmond. It's uh, I'm I'm above you according to my picture, but anyway, Janice Desmond, co-chair, the board. Great. Next, Lucille Sargento, board member. Janice Lindblom, board member. Elaine Shambari, liaison. Susan Drevich Kelly, board member. Uh, Linda Hayes, Helpful. director. Karen Canfield, board of selectmen liaison. Joan Powers, liaison for South Shore LB services. Barbara McFadden, I don't remember what I'm called, sorry. It's been a while. Alternate board member. Alternate. Or okay. so, I'm sorry, pardon me, associate board member. Is that correct? You can't remember either, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Caitlin Coyle, board member. Okay, I think we got everybody there. <laughs> It's hard to keep track, but I think we've got and, and just for anyone that, I guess, Janice, just so you know, because you just came in afterwards, Seth is recording this, um, and it's also live on Facebook. Right. And apparently last time we had 200 views. I apologize to interrupt. Um, with your account, I cannot make this live on Facebook. Okay. That's right. Okay, sorry, Seth. But That's it okay. can be recorded and posted to Facebook, is what you're saying? I love the Wizard of the Wizard of Oz. I, anyway, this, we this, are being recorded, so. Yes, All right, and this, this meeting will be uh, put onto YouTube. Okay. Okay. Um, well, so I know that uh, Linda tried to um, shoot out some past, well, some some of tonight's documents, and we tried to get August meeting minutes from Maud, who has resigned from the board. Um, but unless somebody got something that I didn't get, she sent out the March meeting minutes, not the uh, August meeting minutes. I did uh, let her know, as did you, that they were um, the March and not the August, but uh, she didn't get them back to me. Yeah, so we don't, we don't currently, at this exact moment, have those minutes to share with people. Um, okay. So uh, we will get them to you. We can come back around. Well, we'll get them to you at some point and we'll come back around if we have to even next month to approve those minutes. But um, we don't have them to share because probably Maud's driving in the car and can't do it right now. But um, and I'm not I'm sorry to interrupt again, but I did uh, indicate in the last email I sent that we do need to impose on someone to take the minutes if they could. We uh, right. Leslie is not here, and Maud is resigned, so we don't have a secretary for tonight's meeting, and we don't have a secretary necessarily, a half secretary moving forward because Leslie and Maud were splitting duties. Um, so uh, we we would welcome someone to to review. And, and, and Somebody who likes taking notes. I normally take notes anyway. Not that I am. Can, can somebody do it? <laughs> well, and if we don't have an immediate answer, we can maybe still do it because it'll be posted live on YouTube. So. Yeah, I can I can take notes, Linda. Okay, that'd be great, Caitlin. John, excuse me, but I don't know if anyone else is having a hard time hearing you, but I, I'm not having a hard time hearing anyone else, but I am having a really hard time hearing you. Okay. I'm not I don't know if there's a way you can turn up your audio. Does that sound any better? 
talking. Mm -hmm. Does that sound any yeah. better? No, it does. Sound louder? A little bit, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I can. I'm turning things up, I guess. So, does that sound better? It's about as high as I can go. Thank you. Good. Any, any feedback from that? I can hear you fine, though. Okay. I can hear you. Good. Okay. Well, um, uh, since uh, again we um, we can review June minutes if you'd like. We again we don't have August minutes. Um, so if anybody wants to, if if we can take a quick look at June minutes that um, I believe were sent out earlier today. Does everyone have those? I'm not sure if we do. Send them. Pretty simple. Pardon me? They're pretty simple minutes. Yeah, I got it. So take a look at June. Ah, right, okay. I, I'm a alternative, uh, alternate member, and I was at that meeting. My name's not there, but. Okay. You should add it. Then I missed August, so. That was my fault. Sorry about that. Does anybody have any comments? <laughs> Changes, additions um, to June minutes. No. Nope. Child, Lulu. I'm turning her off. Sorry. Mute. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, may I uh, uh, have a motion to approve our June minutes? Motion made to approve our June minutes with the one update of Pat Carlton's attendance. I second it. I second. Very good. Thank you. Uh, well, again, we'll try to get August out promptly. Um, next, Linda's report. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Um, thanks for zooming in. Um, we have been you know, doing our best. I know we had a question earlier as to if we were going to open or planning to open. And, you know, outside of not having the bodies here at the Senior Center, we feel open. <laughs> I mean, we are accustomed somewhat to remote um, activities anyway, but uh, even the little bit that we're trying to do is keeping everyone pretty busy. Um, we did mail out the newsletter for September and October. Um, certainly that's somewhat of a group effort, but Lisa and um, prepares it for the most part and Jill, with Jill's assistance and everybody sort of chips in. Uh, we also distributed it still to the Housing Authority and, you know, the, the Town Hall anyway. Um, and it's online almost immediately. So I have tried to make people aware of that and also the periodic constant contact messages, emails. So I usually include the links or buttons people can click just to get to it. From there immediately. Um, we continue to um, update the town website, you know, if there is anything new to add. Um, and one of the new things added, if not a couple, well, three actually, <laughs> um, on the town website, Council on Aging page, is the Unipay um, Electronic Payment Center now. That's been um, constructed so just like you can pay your taxes or water bill or um, permits online so you can get in through the town website and even for that matter through the town clerk or you can go directly to the council on aging page and down at the bottom are the quick links 
there's three. Uh, one of them is this page. So um, I could also email the link. I mean, the link is available and takes anybody directly there. I have included it, as I said, in some of my constant contacts. Um, I'm not even certain anyone has used it yet. And it was um, obviously set up for what we might anticipate taking payments for currently, which isn't everything. And then also anticipating what we may go back to taking payments for like trips, transportation. Um, Bob Jackman's program is on there and that's something that we are taking payment for currently, as well as you know donations or payments for our exercise instructors, which has been off for a while. Pretty much everything's been free, but um, they would like to begin to get paid and we're trying to work that out as well. Um, in addition, I'll mention, so also the quick link, I, I put together a, a simple survey, a quick survey, quick enough anyway, on just to try to plan for the next, whether it's the next three months, four months, six months until we open the new building, just to see what people, and I'm not even asking, we're not even asking for names. Um, it's just to get a sense of whether people would be willing to come to this building for an activity or the Harbor building if we decided to go there or the gymnasium, which we are proposing to begin to use for a few things because I was at least um, advised by the health department director, Drew Sheely, that that could be used. That's big enough. That could accommodate people, whether it's at six feet intervals or exercising without a mask at, um, I forget now whether it has to be 12 feet, 10 feet or 12 feet, but anyway, it's the only place big enough to do that besides the great outdoors. Right. So um, I've received some, um, some responses, which has been kind of interesting. And even at quick glance, um, you know, even probably 18 to 25 yeses on doing things, anything, do you know what I mean? They're really kind of interested in trying to, in us bringing things back if we could. But as I mentioned in my letter in the newsletter, you know, we know it's not a race that's been said and um, we don't really want to push the envelope or do propose anything that's not in people's best interest. So. Um, Anyway, um, Linda, how was that sent out, that survey? I mentioned it in my letter in the newsletter. Oh, okay. And then when I sent out the constant contact email or two, I included okay. the link or the button for it. Okay. Um, otherwise, that's maybe been it. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit quiet. But, mm -hmm. um, but it may help that I'm mentioning it here. So um, feel free to go in. It is the quick link down at the bottom of the page. Um, and I allude to it earlier and just direct people there as well. And then also I'll mention, and Susan's here, of course, anyway, but um, the Job Seekers Networking Group is reinstated beginning this month. And um, it is um, Zoom-based. But the link for that, for information for that, is also on the page. We do have a new social services uh, social worker. Her name oh. is Erica, Erica Sora. So she's been hired and you know has been in and met with all of us. And Jenny, of course, will work with her um, as well. So we're happy about that. That's good news. Um, well, you know, let me interrupt. Is she still, where's her office now? Office is right where Laura was. Um, she's a roommate of, of Anne Marie Galvin in the Harbor Building in the okay. side office. Okay. I did indicate that we will have an office for her, at least a part-time office for her, which was always the intention, I guess, that in addition to our shine counselors and you know visiting professionals, that we'll have an office there that would be available to the social worker when she needs to meet with people in the senior center. Can we um, can we invite her to join our meeting next month? Oh, of course, I'd be happy to do that. Just introductory. Yep, that's a good idea. I didn't think of that this month, but I should have. Um, I will mention we did have a, a nice event. Um, just trying to think about things, as I've mentioned at other meetings, to connect with people virtually somehow or otherwise. Um, and of course, we'd done the pianist way back Memorial Day, which people did enjoy. That was, of course, on cable broadcast and then YouTube sent out email. But anyway, uh, Lisa came up with. Uh, using the known as ice cream truck 
to go around to four different locations, which we did on Friday. Um, as a Labor Day treat, I guess, and they were dollar ice cream cones, so we were subsidizing the actual 350 that the cones cost, or the cups. Um, so we served 88 people between the uh, three different housing authorities, and the last stop was um, at the Harbor Building. And I will mention as a little uh, <laughs> something I think we're going to have to talk about with Age Friendly, um, is boy, oh boy, there needs to be more benches. I mean, we had people, of course, gathered, waiting, talking, waiting in line, you know, and there were no, the housing authority has one or two and they're, and they're sort of far apart. Um, so not super helpful, especially during COVID and, you know, um, social distancing, but the Harbor building, I mean, granted it's not in use, um, but boy, more benches, it was noticeable, would be nice. Um, Flu vaccines uh, will be, are scheduled to happen in September at the Harbor Building through the health department, but they just have asked for help from us to disseminate the information and we even have the forms. So they're having to call the health department to make a, an appointment and then it will be, they'll wait, they'll get called in, but they'll have to have completed the paperwork um, beforehand. So we have it here, we put it outside when we're open and so anyone could stop by and pick it up here as well as the health department if they want. Uh, the dates are um, Wednesday, September 16th and Thursday, September 17th. It was in our newsletter and originally scheduled for the 15th and they changed it. Um, so that so is new Liz, information. Can I interrupt to, to ask you to repeat that? Do people need to sign up and, and be yes. scheduled? Yep. before they so there's no walk-in apparently no walk-in how they'll handle that if it happens i don't know but but they're being at people are being asked to make an appointment okay and linda could you just repeat so we're actually they're going to be doing this not at the power center hall the harbor building not at st mary's no at the community okay. building uh, at 44 jericho Road. yeah okay linda linda yes. um i thought i heard that older people should wait until october the flu shot because of COVID, it would last longer. But I guess well, the health would know that better than I would. I I have uh, Drew Sheely has made that statement, not not directing people to wait, other than because it's a long flu season, and um, you know if 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 you might get it too early or early, and then you know it's at the peak in January or February, you know maybe it would have been wise to wait. Um, it's certainly not a directive as far as older people go, but it would be a consideration maybe. Um, I have to say, excuse me, I'm going to say that the Situate uh, Health Department was here at, uh, at the condo today and they did the uh, flu, flu shots. Okay. Well, from the Situate Town, town Hall. And my doctor said you should have it done now because you don't want it near when they come out with the shot for the fall virus. It takes, it's also advised you do it as soon as possible whenever it's right. <laughs> it takes two so weeks. So I guess there's some, you know, differing opinions. Joan, I'm sorry, I didn't catch exactly what you It you're takes saying. two weeks for it to really work. And, and they already have people that have the flu. Uh, okay. It certainly can't hurt, but, and, and I, so although that was said, Pat, I've, I heard the same, but only from that one source and Think that makes people feel more comfortable earlier is um, okay um, so moving on to a little bit about transportation my sad news is that Kathy Clarkson gave her notice she is retiring oh um, Kathy's retiring yeah yeah <laughs> what? unfortunately from from us anyway so um, she was a cracker jack or is and um, that's too bad but effective October 1st so they may have actually posted the job this week on indeed which um, Bob Clark has started to use with success. So, um, so that's nice, I guess. It's a union position, it's full time, um, and there were no changes to it. So he could put it right out there without having to go through the usual um, internal week long posting first. So it's out there. Um, we've been continuing to, to drive with two of our three drivers. Um, one has not come back and um, one has been very part-time, um, so I'm not sure how much, you know, 
whether we'll continue to have those two drivers, I would uh, probably foresee we need to hire another driver as well. Um, we've been doing weekly rides to the supermarket, hum, however many it takes, two different supermarkets, two different days, and sometimes multiple rides on the same day, if there's so, enough people taking logistic, them. Linda, logistically, you got a, you got a month. Can, can the town hire a new, hire, re vet, in, interview, and extend an offer to somebody and probably and get somebody in by October 1st? I mean, it could happen if, if people are clamoring and find the job and get on there quickly. It, but at the same time, um, Jill is, has always been Kathy's backup and we can okay. all chip in for a week or two. I mean, it's fairly minimal and I suppose um, at this point, uh, Social Community Action Council has also resumed um, their out of town medical for us when we need them. So we have continued to do some of it when Joe has been available to do those rides. And we do have social community action council if we need to rely on them. Okay. So, you know, it's- Yes, there's a backup. It's manageable. We've got 31 clients in August. Um, you know, we're used to 65 or so. So, you know, it's not, not quite the same. How long was Kathy in that role? Was it? Under two two years, years exactly, pretty much. Well, a little over two years now. She started um, in July two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we had Jean uh, for about a year and a half before that. Maybe two years for Jean also. And then Q, of course, had been here originally. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but things have been, you know, no issues as far as I know, really no issues. Um, we had started the COVID questions this past month for people coming on just because maybe it was starting to um, increase a little bit. So we thought we should do the questions, which we do uh, the day before primarily. So in terms of outreach as well, uh, we had four shine appointments uh, with Rich all over the phone. Um, the beach pass was very popular this month. Um, Denny interacted with 46 clients in various methods virtually for the most part. Um, uh, in terms of food assistance, which, which you know, we don't generally um, participate in, I guess, but we had the option through social elder services to participate in a USDA food box distribution program, frozen, very good frozen food um, that we were instructed to pick up at a certain time and then distribute immediately or almost immediately. And we did that twice um, to 13 to 20 collected. And we knew maybe we're feeding more than just their, themselves um, over, over the summer anyway. So um, that, that went well. Um, we're not the food pantry and as yet we're not really, we're not doing lunch. Believe me, I considered whether we could manage maybe having a volunteer help us out and doing grab and go lunches like many of the senior centers who have been doing lunches, of course, pre-pandemic, um, but uh, we just couldn't guarantee that we could manage all of that in our space, so we have not done that. Um, otherwise, we've made a few referrals to the food pantry, and um, you know, Jenny continues to oversee that. Uh, Meals on Wheels, nothing new. They continue to do it. Social elder services out of the Methodist Church with their own volunteers. Um, the housing, uh, in particular, the, the loss and green development um, lottery applications are online now. Um, we have them here if somebody does call in looking for something, but we've also directed many people to the website so that they had all the information they needed to apply to that lottery to see if they're eligible, which is the initial um, application information. And then fuel assistance um, is ramping up a little bit. Recertifications um, are happening currently and the period for fuel assistance begins November 1st. Um, so programs, I started to talk about that a little bit, you know, tons of time involved in communicating with people, whether through email or phone calls, um, registering them because we have to limit the participation um, setting up because somebody has to show up and set up chairs and disinfect and you know everything else. So um, there's certainly a lot involved even in the little bit that we might be doing. Um, so 
virtually that's a little easier but there's still a lot of communication involved in the emails and sending the links out if that's what we're doing Janice Desmond and, and I um, my new memory training instructor volunteer we did we did our pilot which went really well it was a small number but we decided to, to do it anyway because it was our first time trying it with zoom and it went well but we ended up with four or five for the most part for the week so we are hoping to start it again next Monday, September 14th, but I think we only have maybe three signups currently. So I think we'll wait until we have at least six or seven, um, just because it is much more um, interesting for the group to have a little bit more input from multiple. Um, right. Anyone's interested, it, you know, it, it's fun, <laughs> good stuff, and it works. Um, and I, well, <laughs> So and um, we continue I would, with Zoom. I wouldn't jump on that and, and say, yes, it does. I'm still working on it. <laughs> you remember that it works? Good. Well, some days it works and you know, like everything else, some days it doesn't. I've had the benefit of doing it for a you know a year and a half anyway. So it works after a year and a half. <laughs> anyway, Bob Jackman continues to um, you know, do somersaults for people. He really he puts in a lot of time researching, coming up with topics, continuing now to record them, and then it has to go through multiple iterations to get it online for people to, um, to view. So both through cable and YouTube, but we make it unlisted in a limited scheduled time frame, And we do hope people um, contribute to that effort because we are, we are trying to pay him as well, a lot of time. But it was well received, it's well received. There's no doubt about that. Our men's breakfasts have continued with Zoom. You know, it varies, but we had a good August meeting with um, nine people um, signing on to hear from Fred Friedis from Hummerock, who um, recently had published a book on the history of Hummerock. So that was really, really great. Oh. Um, not so great September. A few people came out to join us um, for Mark. Um, he was a great guy and really has this dual role right now, which is, I think, fortunate for the Chamber of Commerce. Um, just because he is president and also, you know, works for Coastal Heritage Bank. I have that right. Um, anyway, he's a nice guy and very uh, informed and informative. So October, we're going to do something outside. Hopefully that's successful. And then in November, um, Lucille, we do have Joe Kelly signed up to provide his presentation, whether virtual or we'll see what happens in November to talk about his um, new school in Afghanistan and even the um, the efforts that the BAC has gone through um, much to his credit I guess to make us a Purple Heart community. Yeah. Um, we continue Thursday mornings if anybody's interested um, and I you know publicly I would thank a few of the um, town officials that have come on to join us you know the health department director Bruce Sheely. We had Kyle Boyd who's always a pleasure <laughs> and so just so um, nice sharing his expertise on the coastal um, efforts, coastal management efforts. Um, the police chief, the new police chief came on and I continue to try to get more people on. So um, if the town administrator's in, uh, listening, I think he's next, I have to ask. So um, anyway, we, and we do have a few Zoom presentations scheduled. Um, Oh, we had one pretty successful one in August on plant-based nutrition, which I do think people are getting back to with being at home and doing their own gardening and organic, and maybe that's how they want to continue to eat. Um, so it was actually interesting, and this woman is a wealth of information from Big Y. She is the nutritionist. So um, that was great. We have a, a local author who just wrote a book that I read. It was, it was very good, Coming Home. Um, um, about, and it's a nice theme where she has the house that's been through many generations of the family sort of being part of the story. So she's going to be on a Zoom call for people in October. And then iPad training tips, which is maybe good timing for people on Zoom. So they have to at least be able to get on it first with their iPad to get the training tips. So those are coming up. Uh, the things we're trying to do outside live, well, we're doing exercise. So um, balance and strength training, Tai Chi, uh, we didn't get Zumba happening outside, so that's moving into the gymnasium beginning next week, if you know, we get enough participants for that. We have done book club, knitting, 
and we are planning the writing groups to meet outside in September or beginning in September for however long that might last. And then I think we have um, 11 or 12 people signed up to do a trail walk tomorrow, which is, which is the limit. So otherwise, I think it's a waiting list. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's great. I think people miss it. They love it. And um, you know, they're following all the guidelines to just get outside with or without Nordic poles Good. Um, and do that. Um, anyway, that is, you know, my, my report on activities, I guess, um, as I said, busy trying to update things, do a little inventory around here, clean up as able, you know, um, but any questions or? Yeah, anybody have any questions for Linda on anything? I have one. Um, are we gonna, tonight are we going to get into the new senior center? Some updates there? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. I could go into that now or I could let everybody talk and then we can bring it up. It's on the agenda. I'll just hold my questions. That's okay. JD, which do you prefer? Oh, let's, let's stick to the agenda. Lucille's trying to throw us off track here. I'd like to uh, comment. I know. I usually talk about it, but we might as well. We'll, 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 we'll go to our liaisons here. Um, uh, JD, can I just make one quick comment? Yeah. Um, I, about the Lawson Green Apartments, um, just that I, I drove by there recently and could see that the, it looks fantastic. It looks completely in line with yeah. the rest of the, the buildings around there. It looks great. It does, yeah. yeah. Been fast, pretty fast. Yeah. No, it looks, I noticed that last week as well. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully it should fit in seamlessly. <laughs> right. It looks it. it yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, from all reports, I don't have any numbers, but it's going to be very popular. So I can imagine the lottery will be, um, you know, well attended. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know how they do it. They just pick the names from a hat. I don't know. But... <coughs> Lucky winners. Yeah. Good. Um, very good. Uh, Karen, what's going on with the Board of Selectmen? You know, nothing. <laughs> Um, I actually was thinking about it earlier today, and it's I, 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 you already mentioned that the social workers on on um, 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 reported to duty, um, which is the most important thing. And uh, other than the update on the building, which we'll get to, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm really just available if you have any questions about stuff that's going on. My head's spinning. We've been we've been trying very. Hard. I will tell you one thing: we did change the more board meetings to a Zoom format. Um, as of this week, uh, it was the feeling that uh, it's much easier for people to participate and we have you know, kind of put a lot of important things on hold thinking that we would get through this quicker than we have um, and we just, it, we just yeah. cannot do that anymore. So uh, we had um, uh, something like over 40 people attended. Oh, wow. It was on um, Facebook Live, and then I think Seth, I think you told me that it was up to five or six hundred views, which is great. Um, uh, and I think the people like the format, so uh, kudos to Seth for just helping us figure out how to make that work. Um, so we'll be we're going to keep doing it as long as it keeps working. But anyway, Karen is now the chairman. I just wanted to mention Karen is now chairman of the board of selectmen. Okay. Hey, which is why I'm wicked tired, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah. So yeah. So we um. Yeah, I really just I'm here if you have any questions or just to, so I can report to our board what you guys are up to. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Karen? Just want to comment. In June, she that was the first time when Karen mentioned about closing Front Street. It was hard to picture, but really brought a lot of vitality to the town. Yeah, so now I'm going to tell you how that's ending. <laughs> yeah, thanks. No, it was very successful. Um, it accomplished what we wanted, which was to keep our, our restaurants viable and open. Um, it wasn't perfect for all the retailers. And now that it's the weather is going to be less conducive going forward to uh, um, have outdoor seating. Actually, all except the galley have figured out how to do it not on the street. Mm -hmm. um, so on... September 21st, the closures for, on Front Street will stop. Okay. Um, there'll probably be accommodations for the galley, but that'll probably be parking lot space or uh, parking spaces um, up front. 
they're they're figuring Jim's figuring that out with the restaurant owner now. Um, and then there's talk about, you know, doing sort of a more robust first Friday thing again. Oh yeah. So um, yeah, so we'll see. It was it definitely helped and people and residents loved it. Yeah. But um, our retailers are so struggling. <laughs> if you wanna go Christmas shopping, I encourage you to do it early. <laughs> and yeah, down that's the unfortunate online. thing. <laughs> sorry, it's Aaron. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just, on that topic, um, is there any news or insight into Riva and that space and what's going to happen to it? I don't know what's going to happen. There's rumors about that building, but they're just rumors, so I won't, I won't repeat them. Um, but, you know, she's, Salt Society is the same owner. They're doing gangbusters. So um, we're at least retaining a good restaurant tour downtown. We'll see. I haven't heard anything officially, so I don't know. We do have a new business going. Creo, unfortunately, is leaving, um, but is being replaced by a bakery. Just oh, uh, yeah, I know. We're all like, yes, when are you opening? <laughs> so I think it's called Blackbird Bakery. And, then and where, we'll, where is it going? And where where Creo is you? now, where the yogurt store is, next to... Uh, oh, 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 yes. Oh, great. That'll be great. Yeah, I'm, needs a bakery. I'm sorry to lose Creo, but I'm excited they're going in. So get your uh, Thanksgiving pie orders in now. <laughs> That's really all I have. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Joan, Powers, anything? what's going on with the South Charlotte services? Every, everything's about the same. The meals are still going. Everybody's happy with that. There's no changes. Okay. Are you still volunteering, Joan? To, are you delivering meals for them? I, I go in every day and help get the bags and everything ready. So I'm there from 9 to 11. Well, we have some young men that, are, that have stepped up that are our drivers. Great. Young men like high school students, young college age No, no, these are some people right now that aren't working. Yeah. Uh, they're working part time. Okay. And mo most of them just do it one day a week, so. We have three drivers every day. Great. Okay. And they're up to about, if I remember right, Sue has told me about 40, 45 lunches. Around, around 45, and then we do like 30 bags for Norwell. Oh, wow. And the bags for Norwell are for home delivered meals for Norwell residents? No, it's for the senior center. So their senior center doesn't have a, a place where they can work, but they have drivers. So we just do the bags and then the, the driver picks them up and then he delivers the, the meals along with the bags to the senior center. But that's new that that's being done through. No, the no, we've been, we've been doing that for quite a while. Uh, before COVID, is that even right? Before, oh, even before that, yeah. Oh, I see, that. okay, I did not know that. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. But it sounds like your manpower is okay. Yes, it is. Well, we're doing good. 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 That's great. <laughs> yeah, first time I've heard that in a yeah, long, long in time. A while. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, Elaine, what's going on with Friends of Situated Seniors? Okay, um, there is really nothing to report. We haven't met. We haven't been doing anything since March. Um, and I can speak for Gordon as well that we haven't been doing anything as far as, uh, now I even forgot what we called it, the other, uh, build a campus. We are just on hold. Okay. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have anything or we, we'll move into a little overview of senior, the Senior Center Project? Well, has everybody seen it? Has everybody been by? Been by and or perhaps took a look at um, some photos that, that we passed along. Right. Oh, I actually have a few. Um, I can share my, oh, I can't share my screen now. Well, you know, they weren't terribly important photos, really, but uh, recent photos that Steve Kirby had, um, usually at our monthly Public Building Commission meeting, he offers a little uh, photo progress mm -hmm. slideshow. So there were 13 photos. Um, you know, the back of the building really looks very good, short of having the siding or the brick, but the bricks have been delivered, so um, they actually will be beginning that brick system shortly. Um, 
Building is basically watertight. Weather tight, they say. Weather tight? Weather tight. Well, hopefully watertight. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, the sidewalks and um, asphalt and, you know, the, the front of the building there um, has, is being paved and created, but also the bollards um, that are going in in front of the handicap parking and the entrance uh, because it's a flat um, entry area, so the bollards are necessary. So stainless steel bollards are being prepared to go in there. Um, they're spreading a lot of loam and um, preparing the site for plantings, which they need to do for the next two months um, to get them in before November 1st, I believe is their cutoff date. Um, roofing is 95% complete, shingle and membrane. So that looks great. I think it's um, a nice roof, nice color scheme. Um, windows look great. I don't know if anybody's noticed. I mean, they're different on each side. I've, I have had a negative comment, but the back side, the facade that's brick, is meant to blend with the buildings that are part of the campus setting and across the way and central. Um, some of the more historic uh, looking buildings anyway. And then the front is meant to blend in with a more residential um, flavor, I guess, with the surroundings. So that's why the variations, which makes it also kind of interesting, is the feeling. Um, Walk-in cooler freezer. I did have a picture of that. Maybe I'll put that in my, in my constant contact email. It's beautiful. It's very shiny. But yeah, anyway, you walk, sorry. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah. very impressive. Yeah. You walk into the fridge and then you walk into the freezer if you want to go that far. And so the doors. Um, um, and the MEP, which is the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, they're in there now doing that work. Um, both floors and the HVAC work has begun. Um, and as well, the uh, rec center is sort of back online. So the interior work is restarted for them, um, framing and plumbing and electrical. They're putting, you know, they were delayed for the bathrooms upstairs while some of the pipes were looked at. And um, so, and you've seen the outside where the parking lot is and the curbing um, and the sidewalks that are going in there. There's just still a question um, remaining on the Cudworth areas and, um, where a crosswalk may go or should go. So um, they haven't quite completed that piece of it. Um, the elevator was just being delivered this week, perhaps? Yeah, I think that's going in next week. Yeah, so both for the senior center and for the rec center, the elevators have been delivered, mm -hmm. I believe today they were scheduled, but they should be in soon. Yep, install starting next week, yep. Um, and the inside, you know, is beginning to take shape literally. So walls are going up, you know, steel framing is done, walls are going up um, in various places. Uh, the kitchen, they've started to install at least the hood, let's say for the, um, for the ventilation. Area. So it looks great. So then just to mention a little bit about the interior finishes, which I, I probably included last time, but the flooring, which has all been approved, it's a combination of LVT, which is luxury vinyl tile or plank flooring. Two different colors, really. The multi-purpose room is a separate brown shade, and the rest of the center is the same um, color scheme. It's sort of a, a gray tannish um, tone and um, carpeting. So a darker brown striping um, is on the first floor and a lighter tone of the same carpet is upstairs in the hallway only. And then the fitness center and the cardio room area is a separate flooring that's um, especially made for a little more give. Um, restroom, you know, tile on the floor, different tile on the walls, um, a stainless steel look for the stalls, separators, um, and then, um, the countertop is a, a bit of a white marble look. Um, there's a kitchen serving countertop, so the multi-purpose room has a, a, you know, a window, serving window, so to speak, into the kitchen, where it's one of those coil doors that pulls up and then they can serve from there. So that has a, a, a marble countertop as well with some side um, counters and shelving on the outside, on the multi-purpose room side of the kitchen. Um, we did select that same countertop, which is a, a, 
a light gray marble with a little white in it, um, which will also be used for the reception desk area. So of course the wood is all white painted wood and then um, that desk area when you walk in the door in the um, reception is an L shape. It's not huge, but it's an L shaped um, as you walk in before you walk into the staff area or down the hallway or into the lobby. Um, <clears throat> acoustic wall pianos are in the multi-purpose room only. So that's a sound um, absorption, absorption attenuation feature. Uh, window shades I mentioned last time and patio pavers. So much ado about the patio. I mean, they're just pavers, they're not brick. Um, but if you've noticed the patio, it's a, uh, oh gosh, um, 25 feet by, I can't remember the dimensions now. And there is a pergola, which will be painted white in the center coming out from the patio, not covering the whole expanse of the patio, but much of it. Right, a portion of it, I guess I should say. And just to paint a little picture, if I can, I guess, and Janet, feel free, Janice, feel free to um, chime in. So, you know, furnishings, um, we're putting together the bid package to go out. I mean, potentially, I guess, hopefully, maybe next week. I think timing wise, we have suggested it should be um, a February 1st installation date. So, even with that, they think potentially that's tight. Yeah. But um, just in terms of getting the bids back, now we're not just ordering the furniture, we're waiting for bids to come back in, collecting that furniture vendor. Um, and then, I mean, they anticipate potentially there could be delays, but hopefully we're making some selections that are not going to, to be delayed, maybe not coming from um, international locations that would have a problem with that. Um, but anyway, Linda, round tables. Oops. I just interject on that while you're on that topic. Um, yesterday, the, I, I think I might have mentioned that there is a local um, uh, gentleman that owns a, a, a furniture uh, company that had helped with the library. And he sent a note to Steve Kirby yesterday saying, we're waiting, let me know when I can bid. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that he will be as generous in his pricing as he was. Well, that is that is nice. And I knew they had that yet. So I, I think maybe Rachel just has that, the architect or Steve, whoever's sending out the bid package. Maybe yeah, he Steve. reached out yesterday. So I'm sure Steve will make sure okay. he doesn't get overlooked. So we know them. I think, I think uh, Rachel just um, was able to connect with uh, WB Mason. Somebody contacted me today. So I don't know if they'll keep opening it up to others, but we know we have the three at least, which are Red Thread office resources and WB Mason that we assumed would, would bid. Um, so a couple other things we've been doing, but uh, you know, round tables for the multi-purpose room, which again, some of our requirements are not to say unique, really, they shouldn't be, but the idea that the round tables have to collapse and have wheels so you can get them out of the room because there are times we don't want them, but there are times we need 20 of them. Yep. Um, and then <coughs> The chairs, which have to be comfortable, and we wanted arms, and you know we want them to be attractive. <laughs> so it's kind of a tall order for one one little chair, but um, if if we can, and we're trying to have the same model chair that we can use in the multi-purpose room, in the program rooms as well, because that would allow us to potentially order fewer, because we can have them in the program rooms upstairs when we don't have a full use of them in the banquet multi-purpose room and then just bring them down when they're needed. You know, they also have to stack because again, you need to be able to put them in the closet um, and they're not on casters. So no wheels in case anyone, no wheels on those, just straight. But finding all of those attributes in a single chair that's good looking um, and maybe not, you know, too pricey um, is a tall order, as I said. So we haven't quite found that. But the seating arrangements we're um, looking at, there's a lobby as you walk in, um, which would have a sofa and a couple of chairs and you know, tables. And um, the cafe lounge, which would have seat, comfortable seating in front of the fireplace, but then also a few ca small cafe tables, so to speak, with um, two or three chairs that people could use. Now there's a window into the kitchen there for people to order coffee 
or potentially some small, you know, items, lunch items or breakfast items. There's also a door to the kitchen, um, but there's a couple of doors to the kitchen actually. And anyway, and then uh, love seat chairs configuration, that sort of thing. And then upstairs, um, a little bit of impromptu seating, some benches planned for the hallways, and then um, the game room would have some comfortable seating, poker table, card tables, pool table, um, and then again, the seating configuration maybe in front of the TV. So those are just a few of the things that you can anticipate anyway. Those are the areas that we're furnishing some of them. Melinda, I have a question. Yep. I, th I think you and Rachel or whomever are probably already on this, but for example, if due to COVID, if we have a seating capacity, if a table's got a seating capacity of, let's say, eight, mm -hmm. and due to COVID, we can only sit seat six, which means we've got spillover of two extra people per table that need to have a place to sit if we were maxed out, which means we need more tables. Well, we're, you know what, we're, um, anybody, if Janice has a comment, please, please feel free. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, first of all, in the program room one and two, when we open the slider, um, it, it only, right? Isn't that what you're talking about? That's that the multi-purpose yeah. room, yep. I mean, yep. the multi-purpose, we can only fit a certain number of those big tables, right? At maximum capacity, yes. And yeah. I think... You know, we're just, we're planning for, hey, if, if we have to um, reduce the numbers that we allowed or have multiple lunches, so maybe we schedule two lunches. Yeah. So if the, if the tables comfortably seat you know, six to eight, six to eight, I mean, if right. we want to squeeze people in for a fundraiser someday, <laughs> you know, in another year, then they could be eight. On a regular basis, it might be six. And yeah. if we're still limiting, then it might be four, four or five. And, yeah. um, that is how we'll do it. We will, you know, our contingency is just allowing fewer than capacity would. Okay. Would Allow few, fewer bodies as opposed to ex expanding. Capacity. But we're not buying less or setting up for less or, you know, buying smaller. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Anyway, not yet. Okay. But no, that's a good question. And, I, you know, we've definitely been asked. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, Linda made it sound kind of, you know, simple, but it's not, this is not simple. No, no it's is, not simple. Uh, Sorry. We have You're been, right. We have been at this since April and now probably three times a week. And yeah. Well, yes, since April, but, you know, blame COVID a little bit. It was very hard in the beginning to, you know, yep. we couldn't gather. We're just, you know, it's a website. We were waiting to go into a showroom, which was really not really the way you want to go to a showroom it was limited um yeah. and limited number yeah. of people you know everything's been limited and drawn out and a little hard virtually so um made yeah, that much now we're, but we are narrowing it down now and i think we're getting i think we're getting close it will be great um so that said we uh let's see yeah any questions in particular let me know what what you'd be interested in knowing Lucille, you had questions earlier. Did you have any specifics about the system? Uh, okay, hold on a minute. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Oh, you can. Okay. Uh, now, I was just curious about where are we with the um, the naming rights? Is anything happening there? You know, nothing is, as Elaine suggested. No, nothing's been done. So really, that's. I'm glad you did bring that up because that is a topic somewhat for us to begin to consider. Number one we need um the, the the letters on the building so to speak so the recreation gymnasium veterans memorial gymnasium is, is named there and um, the library maybe as well so you know there was a time we were talking about potentially calling ourselves something different but i think even without having a real community-wide um campaign or survey most of the uh feedback that i've received is people are just fine, happy with Situate Senior Center. And it works because now we have a recreation center and you know, it, it really is fine. So I don't know if any of you have further comments on that, but that seems to be the direction right now we're going. Um, and 
There was a little issue with that because the generator is on the, yeah. the north face of the building in between First Paris and the building. And that's the facade where the signage could go. Um, the generator's a little higher and the lettering, you know, would have to fit there. So they kind of figure that out or where else potentially we could put the lettering. Um, there has been a thought that we'd want signage, you know, a sign like at the entry or I know, <laughs> I'd be careful to say this, but, you know, some people are going to electronic um, signs to be able to advertise a little bit of what's going on, you know, 1230 or, you know, fundraiser Saturday night. I don't know that we're there and that would involve the planning board. So I'm, I'm not sure if we're just waiting on that or still considering doing something like that. Something similar and then to last, sorry, fire and safety building, right? Where they display something similar to the fire and safety building where they're displaying sort of... Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, I'd always imagined a nice wood carved sign. And of course, then you have to go out and change the letters manually when you want to put something on there, which is how the high school does it or the recreation department up at the um, transfer station does it. But, so we'll see that hasn't been decided or, you know, or approved in any way. Um, but lastly, the room naming. So without having other names, we need something. We need to call the room something other than program room one and program room two, etc. So um, I would be happy to entertain sort of suggestions. It doesn't mean down the road we couldn't sell off, you know, those rooms for people and have, you know, let's say it was called the Peggotty Room. Um, doesn't mean it couldn't also have, uh, um, I think Karen might have mentioned last time to me how the library, you know, left a space that you could then slide in a plaque that would then be attributed to that donor. So it doesn't have to be done immediately and we could wait, but I still want the rooms named something more interesting. Yeah. So Falmouth, <laughs> um, we had seen, did it for all the beaches in town. That was kind of mm -hmm. cool. I love that idea. I think yeah. that's great. Yeah. Now, if we have well, enough beaches. You know, I'm not sure we have enough beaches, but I think we could certainly use the beaches as part of the rooms. I think we have well, enough. How many rooms are there? That need to be named. More than I think the number of beaches we have. Uh, well, have to I count know there's up. probably at least yeah. 10 beaches. How many, how many rooms are there? 10 beaches. Hmm. Well, there's really one, two, three. I mean, it doesn't mean the game room couldn't be called the game room. It could. And the fitness room could be the fitness room. But so there's in a lot that of said. Areas in town, I think, too, that we could add in. Um, you could even call, you know, you could even call one of them like the lighthouse room or something too. Right. I, mean, so I think it'd be great to have it be consistent room, what the situation room. is known for. Oh, I'm sorry. The beaches and landmarks, that's yeah. true. Yeah. How was yeah. that decision made? I'm sorry? Like on our committee or by subcommittee? Um, honestly, I don't know that it has to be formalized, but it could be. I mean, I, I think it could happen here. Um, yeah, why don't we eat one and if everybody put together a little, you know, if everybody's comfortable with that. I do. Idea. I think it's a wonderful idea. I do too. And I think, you know, between beaches and landmarks, let's put together a list and start <laughs> thinking about assigning and see if we still need more, if everybody's comfortable. Does that sound good? Before Can you just feel yeah, like one could be the Bates room or something. I mean, right. You know, I could just right here. Yeah. Um, the um, either the floor plan or a list of rooms. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I can do that. That's a good idea. I can, I can not, I, like I, just being in that space. That's uh, I don't know if it's the exercise room or it's one of the rooms upstairs that you look out the window and all you see is Lawson Tower. Like, right. Yes. Right. Tower room. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. If you're gonna do landmarks, it's like you literally look out at it. <laughs> yes. What happened to the fundraising idea of naming the rooms after people that paid money? With COVID. COVID. Linda said COVID. that fundraising has been that on would pause be since March. From the, what? If you had well, the we have not done anything, anything since March. Go ahead. Okay. Can't. It's, it's, Karen answered that question. Yeah, so you could do both. So you could call it the Lawson <laughs> Tower Room. And then at the bottom, there's there'd be a little like slider where you would you know you, you could put in use or whatever. And then let's say you know it's the Linda Hay that this room sponsored or generously donated by the the Hayes family. 
and you just put it underneath. It, so, you know, the only named rooms at the library were very substantial. So the community room was actually named after Judge Nolan, but they gave, I think, like $100,000. Everybody oh. else got the little things slid in there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. If somebody gives $100,000, we'll get a new sign. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we take that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, any other questions about the site or the um, what's going in in the building or the building itself? Yeah. It's yes, coming Karen. together. It's still on track. It's still on schedule. Um, there haven't been any significant delays. Now it's going to be the fine tuning work more and more because it's going to be inside electrical work or inside plumbing work. You're not going to see, but still more or less on track and on budget. You know, to more or to, less. Yeah, to get to get to February. So. Karen. Uh, two questions. So, um, I didn't realize that the, the schedule, I, I was in my mind, it was the end of the year, but so you're thinking occupancy sort of March 1st ish now, if they're not doing the furnishing until February 1st. Um, you know, and again, it was kind of all in my head. My, I, I really did not know what the schedule should be knowing a substantial completion of the contractor's date was January 15th. Now there certainly could easily be an extension to the end of the month. And then that's why we chose the February one date for the furnishing. Okay, that stage. makes sense. Okay. So could it be two weeks or a month at that point? I think um, somebody who, who's who been through this may know better. I, I meant to find out from the um, you know people in the safety complex, you know, how that, how long they waited or the library. So I, I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's always a delay. Um, I was hoping for Valentine's Day, but um, that may be unrealistic. Um, the reason I ask is one of, I did forget this, um, the conversation about the food pantry, the, um, they still very much want to go into the B wing, uh, at least temporarily. Um, it will only be temporarily, but temporary could be two years, just the way things move. Um, and they are, we're told we would discuss with them a memorandum of understanding, but that they could not contemplate moving in until this project was done because they can't be in the way. So I just want to make sure that they know what that date is. Um, well, it does sound like they need to do some construction for them to go in. So that yeah, would I, they do. So we might be able to overlap a little because you'll just be doing interior work at that point. Yeah. Um, but they, you know, I don't think it's realistic to tell them they can be in January one if you're not in yet. Right. Well, of course, uh, uh, someone mentioned this to me, the building that the present senior center is in. Is that possible for the, to turn that over to the, uh, as a permanent thing, to the uh, food pantry people? It, it's not an option for permanent. It could be an option for temporary. We're only looking at temporary anyway. Okay. The, the rub being is they are not, they're a not-for-profit, not associated with the town. So yeah. the food pantry is a nonprofit. It's not a town service. I mean, it tech, you know, it's not through the town of Citroen. They're completely independent. So if we were to offer that building for lease, we would have to offer it to the general public for lease just because of the rules. We couldn't just give it to them um, because it's a, it's a municipal asset. As it stands, the, minor, uh, the um, Council on Aging building is slotted for consideration to be put on the market on, um, I think it'll be in the November warrant. We haven't quite finished the warrant. Um, it was supposed to be in the last warrant with the proceeds to help pay for this building. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's something that, that we haven't exhausted the con conversation about maybe temporary why they look for a permanent home. Um, I don't know if it's feasible. So, but yeah, it's a, it's a good idea, but it's like everything, it's kind of fraught with complication right now. I mean, it's crazy, like, to go into the B-Wing and then we decide on something with the B-Wing, they move again and again, you know. Just... That's what I said. I said it was a bad idea originally, but then they're really in a, a pickle. They have they, they have looked it everywhere for a home, and they are, they're going to be homeless soon. They, their rent is crazy. They can't sustain their place there. Yeah. The benefit of us is it's, it's safer to have someone in that while we figure out what to do with it. Keeps the insurance costs down. 
you know, it's better to have a body bodies in there than have it just empty. I think it's better for the senior center too. So I've been convinced that temporarily that's maybe their only option. Uh, but I agree with you. It's, it's not perfect at all because we have to do something for the whole building. Yeah. Uh, I did want to also mention, because I forgot this as well. Um, I was speaking to Ruth Thompson today. She's going to be calling you, Linda. Um, and she was thinking, oh, it might be a good time to do an update on, you know, where things are with the senior center and when it's opening and all of that. So I would say to the friends of Situate Seniors, if you are going to resurrect fundraising, um, now that there's a structure, now's the time. And also um, might be a good way to pick it off if Ruth is planning an article. So just plant that seed a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I will pass that on to the leaders. Good. Very good. Uh, anybody else have any other items, ideas, comments, issues? Silence? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Wait, I've got something. Hello. Um, uh <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to get into details right now, but uh, Linda, remember we talked a little bit about that service piece in the newsletter. Yes, well, I will get in touch with uh, your colleagues there because I think I think it can be done easily and it can be done with um, people giving references before we can put them, and that's one way to vet them. So, so that might be the key. Yep, very good. Do you want to? Um, do you want to describe what you were well, suggesting? I just thought with people. Um, you know, sitting around a lot, a lot of seniors. Um, maybe we could have an article or, or something running every time in the in the uh, newsletter about services offered. In other words, uh, you need me to walk your dog during the winter months. I pay this much by. Or do you want me to write, do things when you ch help you with your checkbook or any kind of services that a senior might need sitting out there during this time? You know. But we talked about how would you vet someone if you put them if you put it in. So that would be one way. If anybody was going to want to be listed in there to offer a service to the senior, how much they cost, we would have to get, we would have, have to get references, maybe two or three references for them. And then perhaps if they do get business, you know, maybe just make a little donation to the Council on Aging. You know, maybe somebody's going to get a, a job doing an upholstery job or something to that effect. So I was just thinking services offered might help people out there that need the business as well as a senior needing some services i mean honestly for instance like you know we get we get a lot of calls and and frankly we can't always help so um during the this pandemic piece i received two or three if not more calls about getting someone to come in to do someone's hair indoors you know yeah. going into a residence to do their hair and of course i yeah. i had I, no one to do that and i couldn't find them myself either and I just heard that Suki's down in the harbor. She's not opening anymore. And I heard people, oh, I'm going to miss her. I don't know where I'm going to go. So, you know, maybe there are some uh, some people that now are not working and would love to, you know, get yeah. clients. So I was sure. just thinking about about something to go in the newsletter and the problem, the thought came up, how do we, how do we vet these people? And I think the only way you could do it is really whoever wants to go in there needs to give two or three references for, for you guys to check it out. Great idea. Great. And how, how do we list <laughs> categories of services? Whatever. If you know what, it's just, first of all, whoever puts, whoever puts their service in, we need to give them, you know, maybe 30 words or what, you know, we really have to limit what they have to say, number one. And number two, it just could be in one general category, you know, like, Hey, what do you need? You know, here we are. We can help you. Things like that. I just think the the newsletter right now is a good vehicle to reach a lot of seniors out there. Mm -hmm. you sit around. I mean, I would just say it could be very simple. I mean, if you look at the church newsletter every week, I mean, I mean, people have to pay to to advertise, but there's no categorization of it. It's right. just a smattering of services, and people look at it and they you know, might find something or someone. And it's really pretty simple. It doesn't take up too much space. So a very catchy, you know, a very catchy title. So that whatever you need, you know, what do you need out there? Something to that effect. But 
That's anyway, a great idea. I think it would be a really, you know, and if they felt so like, um, I, I'm working with the JR Hall has had wonderful, wonderful, wonderful speakers. Okay. And um, normally you go there, you sit down and it's $10. Well, they had about 40 people watching on, you know, on camera and um, the, the poor uh, society there, they, they're not getting any, any money because nobody's sitting in there physically. And I just suggested, you know, maybe a don't, you know, send them a little donation. So it's sort of this, the same thing. If we put something in like that and someone gets business, you know, maybe a little donation would be nice to the Council on Aging. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Lucia. So, yeah, we'll set that up this week, next week. Yeah, I'll talk to them. Okay. Oh, I, um, I, I do have one more item. Not really, well, maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but um, something else to consider is, um, you know, the use of our kitchen as well that we're, we're um, um, designing and we'll have available. So that will come up and I guess um, there'll be a need to develop um, whether we're doing lunch every day, lunch three days a week, whether um, we're doing the Meals on Wheels or home delivered meals from our site. You know, those are some things that we will be considering as well. Um, and I'd like to see in house. So that's um, an upcoming effort, just to let you know that in the next few months, we really got to start thinking about how to do that so we can open with it come February or March. And also, if, if any, uh, you know, any not for profits or even businesses want to use the building for an event, yes, that's something else we need to talk about. Well, that is the hope, and that always was the hope. Um, the planning board did put some restrictions on us initially. Um, for allowing us to remain open at those, but I assume those contingencies will come up and we'll either have to go before the board. It's like people go before the board of selectmen for a permit. Okay. Well, we, we still don't know really the date that we're going to, that the center will be allowed to open COVID related, correct? Um, true. We haven't really had that guideline um, specified. That is true. But like I said, some senior centers are are having activities indoors. You know, they are. Now they're limiting the activities and they're limiting the numbers. And I mean it's still restricted to a point, but they are using their buildings. So it's it's odd. It's a little bit gray. Even though we're not, you know, clearly we would be part of phase four. At least that's what the assumption has been since we haven't been mentioned thus far. Yeah. Well, hopefully by March, April. Yes. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, I've had February in my mind, so. <laughs> well, yeah. I know. All right. Well. It'll be a work in progress as we move forward, I think. So. Very good. Well, um, if any, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to entertain a, a motion to um, adjourn the meeting. Thank you all for attending. Oh, well, well, I have one. I have one thing. Yeah, I, I thought the person that did this um, live well situate yes document. Oh, oh. They're not going to talk she, about it. She, she might want to pipe in. I don't know if she she's she's on mute. Caitlin, are you still there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. And um, yeah, I sent that around for for feedback and comments from this group as well as the steering committee that was meeting around the Live Well Situate. So if you have um, feedback and ideas specifically, um, if you wanna get those to me, I'll make sure that that gets incorporated. I just wanted to say, I do have feedback, but I'm just amazed. It's quite well done. And I know how much work went into that because I used to write grants. Uh -huh. So wow, is all I gotta say. Oh, well, thank you. I good good well, I job think she, to the whole yeah. group that had anything to do with this. But I do have ideas, and I, I'll, I'll get. How do I get in touch with you, Peyton? I'll um. I'll Are you send, in here? The, yeah. Her email. She used her email to send yeah. it. Out. I'll send it around. I'll, I'll make sure that you have my email, board. Barbara. Yeah. But on that note, I should mention too, and I'll you know I'll I'll I plan to talk to Caitlin about this as well. But um, we are trying to do a grant to. Um, uh, 
the Office of Disabilities. It's sort of a access um, improvement grant that um, I did not do last year and I would like to do it this year. It's due um, maybe October 10th or 15th. But I had some thoughts that would coincide with Caitlin's um, suggestions. And in particular, maybe could be, well, certainly could even be benches in the campus green, but even the walking path around the multi-purpose soccer field that's behind the building um, and some improvements there or accessibility improvements there, which I think we may need um, for um, allowing everyone access to that path or track, however it you know, ends up being developed. So anyway, she's got great ideas and she really put forth a lot of effort. We really did rely on her. Yeah, it was an excellent document. I, I read through it and it was, it was very impressive. Very I, know, I know, I can tell a lot of work went into that. Yeah. And informative. Uh, and I just have one other thing to say to Karen Canfield. I feel like I know you. Thank you so much for your weekly updates. Uh, I don't watch them every week, but it's been really helpful as a senior at home to hear what's happening in our community. Mm -hmm. So thank you and the other people, the other selectmen that have been doing it with you. Oh, you're welcome. And, and our yeah, man behind the curtain, Seth, is very much responsible for that too. So. Well, thank him too, because it's the right there. there. He's in that little television box right there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yep. I look forward too. <laughs> thank you. Oh, there he is. <laughs> the whiz. We're going to call him the wizard. Yes. He makes an appearance. He makes a last minute appearance. Yes. Uh, well, Barbara, thank you for uh, bringing that up. I completely forgot about that. And yes, um, I think Caitlin would welcome any feedback. I think the document you and, can make edits to and just send her those your edits. Yeah, either way. Probably you can, the best way. Yeah, you can either edit directly in the document and just send that to me or you can make a list of notes in a separate thing and send it to me. I'll, I'll incorporate it. We um, were scheduled to submit it a September 30th to the World Health Organization. So um, I don't think they're going to kick us out if we don't make that deadline, but it'd be nice, I'm, you know, to get yeah. it out there. So, okay. Thank you. And Good Barbara, job. would you, Barbara, can I ask you, maybe you'd be interested in helping with the grant, this particular grant to, to write this, which, because it would coincide with the age friendly. So I can let you know. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to, because I've, I've promised my son I'll start Helping with um, uh, child care. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. mm. So I'm going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> I know about that. that's a good. Four year old. Four year old. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's nice. Can't wait. Tired. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, well good luck with that, too. Then. So, if anybody, yes, everyone, please uh, feel free to take a look at that document. Um, yeah, wonderful effort by Caitlin, and um, and yeah, I think you could you can edit the document and send it to her, and she'll take a look at those at your comments, questions, and if it, and, and try to figure out how to make it make it fit. So. Yep. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, anybody else have anything? Well, then then I'll come back around to. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I think it's uh, closing in on seven o'clock. Yeah, motion to adjourn the meeting. Good. 6.53, do I have a second? I do, I second. Thank you everyone for attending. Appreciate all the feedback. Um, stay well, stay safe. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for your Bye. participation. Bye. 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 Nice to see everybody.